Hello everyone, this is a video about the successful treatment of a case of mold toxicity. Um, as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only, and if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So I recently posted a video um, about a successful treatment of a patient with persistent Borreliosis, also known as chronic Lyme disease. And um, as I said at the beginning of that video, someone had posted a comment in one of my other videos just saying, you can you give some examples of um, successful cases for all intents and purposes to kind of give those of us who are still struggling with um, chronic illness issues some hope that like you know people can get better um, and so I thought that was a great idea so I'm doing a little, little case series um, so I did a, a Lyme case uh, last time so this is the mold case so um, this patient I started uh, I saw her for the first time about uh, maybe a year and a half ago maybe a year and three quarters ago um, came in um, suffering from with chronic fatigue, a lot of joint pain, uh, you know, mostly in lower extremities like knees and hips, but sometimes migrating up to the shoulders, um, uh, brain fog, uh, focus and concentration issues kind of related to the brain fog. And uh, she had um, had a, a bullseye rash, um, maybe, I don't know, a year or so before she came in to see me. She was treated with doxycycline, um, felt improved, but didn't feel like she got all the way better. And then her symptoms just kind of started to creep back again. Um, and then she came in to see me because um, generally speaking, in a lot of cases that I've seen anyways, if the doxycycline doesn't knock it out of the park, there usually aren't any other uh, treatment recommendations uh, recommended through the conventional healthcare system, the provincial healthcare system here um, in Nova Scotia anyways, it's because uh, there is just nothing in the algorithm for like, what do you do if doxycycline doesn't work um, for uh, you know non-neurological or cardiovascular cases of Lyme? Um, so you might be thinking, I thought this was a mold case. Um, you're talking about bullseye rashes and Lyme, what, what the heck? Um, so just bear with me, I'll, I'll get to the mold. So she came in to see me. I recommended that she go on a couple of um, herbal tinctures. I mentioned these in the last video. It's a combination of eight herbs, so four herbs in each formula. Um, Cryptolepis, Alcornia, Ceta, Isatis, Cat's Claw, Japanese Knotweed, Putunia, and Chinese Skullcap. I think I got them all right that time. Um, and so she started working with a fairly robust dose of those herbal formulas. Um, and I also recommended that she start working with something called low dose immunotherapy, also known as LDI, um, because with her case, there are some elements of it that made me think, you know, yes, there could be some residual infection kicking around, or maybe there are some co-infections of Lyme that came along with the Borrelia burgdorferi, the Lyme bacteria that just weren't uh, properly addressed by the doxycycline. Maybe she picked up Babesia as well. Doxycycline is not going to kill Babesia because it's a protozoa. It's, it's a parasite. Um, or maybe there was some viral, uh, a viral component that she picked up along the way. Um, so I you know, thought, okay, yep, yeah, broad spectrum antimicrobials, that makes sense. Um, but then also um, it seemed like, well, maybe the doxycycline did kill off a good chunk of what was going, of what was afoot, but it was more of a um, sort of immune system sensitization that just didn't fully get resolved. Her immune system wasn't able to kind of hit the uh, recalibration switch, so to speak, after the majority of the infection was cleared. And so I thought, well, some low dose immunotherapy to help retrain her immune system would be a good idea. I've posted several videos about low dose immunotherapy over time. Usually easiest to search my YouTube channel if you're not already watching this on YouTube and you can keyword search and it's uh, pretty should be pretty easy to find if you want to learn more about what that is all about. Um, so she went on those um, treatments and she felt quite a lot better. Um, her, her energy levels were starting to pick up, her joint pain was reducing, the brain fog was um, getting better, so we were seeing some good um, headway. Um, but uh, flash forward, you know, I kept her on the same protocol and uh, her symptoms were Im improved, but she got maybe 50% better, give or take, and then her um, symptoms kind of hit a plateau. Um, and so in this case, uh, I had you know previously asked her in the initial visit, you know, um, any history of any environmental exposures, you know, chemicals or uh, heavy metals or things like that. And then, like with the vast majority of my patients, if they're coming in with any type of chronic health issue, um, I'll ask them about a history of any exposure to water damaged buildings, any buildings that had a musty smell, so places that they lived or worked or spent appreciable amounts of time in, like maybe a you know, family member's home or a church or um, you know some place that they spend a lot of time. Um, and then, of course, you know, asking if there's any uh, known mold exposure, you know, any visible mold and that type of thing. Because some folks, when they don't, I don't really have mold on their radar. They're like, oh, if I can't see the mold, there's no mold. Um, so yeah, sure, I spent lots of time in that 
you know, really um, damp, um, or like that damp smelling, that old building smelling, you know, library or something like that. I'm a librarian and I worked there for years and years, but I didn't see any mold. But yeah, it smelled musty in there, but I didn't see any mold. Well, that's, there's mold there just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. If you smell it, not that you have to smell it, some mycotoxins are completely odorless. Um, but uh, anyways, folks don't oftentimes have mold on their radar um, until someone brings it to their attention and then it's very much on their radar. Um, so anyways, I asked her about mold exposure and sure enough, at a previous workplace, it was an older building. Um, you know, there had been a history of some water damage there. It did have a bit of a funky smell to it that was lingering. And so I thought, well, it sounds like there's been some mold exposure, but you know, it made sense to go in with the uh, antimicrobial herbs, go in with a uh, low-dose immunotherapy. So that's what we started with. But where she hit a plateau, um, I talked to her about options moving forward. And uh, as I said in the last video, and I've maybe said in a few other videos, I think about patients who are suffering with complex symptoms, complex chronic symptoms, as being kind of like a house that's on fire. Um, yes, you want to put out the flames, but we need to address the gas leak in the basement that um, led to that fire um, getting started in the first place. Um, and then once the fire's put out, we need to repair the damage that was caused by the fire. So in her case, I said, you know, we could start with some um, mitochondrial support. We could bring in some antioxidants to help your uh, neurological function. We could do some intravenous ozone therapy, things to help promote tissue healing. Um, but I think that it would be a good idea to pursue the possibility that you might have a mold um, issue. And so that could have been something that made you more susceptible to not being um, successfully treated by the doxycycline in the first place. And this might have been something that's kind of precipitating some symptoms. So um, she said, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm doing better. And yeah, let's do the mold test and see what's going on. So we ran a urine mycotoxin test, came back elevated for mycotoxins. Um, we found some ochratoxin, which is associated with um, aspergillus species mold, uh, found some mycophenolic acid, which is associated with penicillium species mold. And so we started a mold treatment protocol. So in her case, I recommended that she continue the herbal tinctures, continue the LDI just for good measure. I think we maybe tapered the dose down, but at half dose or something like that. Um, but I recommended that she start on some activated charcoal to bind up mycotoxins. I recommended that she go on a high potency multinutrient with a full B complex in it, um, along with um, some uh, minerals or trace minerals. Um, so like kind of an all in one high potency multinutrient this wonderful product called Multi-SAP by a company called NFH, which stands for Nutritional Fundamentals of Health, based out of um, Quebec um, here in Canada. Uh, I have no financial affiliation with them. I just really, really like that product. So happy to give a little shout out to Multi-SAP. It's a great product. Um, and so she went on that. And then she also went on some glutathione as well, some liposomal glutathione. Um, and then we started her on a frankincense-based nasal spray. So frankincense diluted in saline, spraying that up each nostril a few times a day. Um, so we started on that. That protocol and thankfully she tolerated it really well. We didn't see any, you know, Herx reaction, die off reaction, detox reaction, didn't see any constipation from going, uh, her starting on the activated charcoal, which is sometimes const constipating in some folks. We have to mitigate that with supplementing with magnesium to keep the bowels moving in, in some of those cases. Um, but she started on the protocol, was tolerating it well, and then after about maybe six weeks or so, we had a follow up, and lo and behold, she was doing a lot better. So the plateau that she had hit in terms of the pain levels, the brain fog, the energy levels. Um, she was doing quite a lot better. Um, so at that point I said, well, you've been on these antimicrobial herbs for quite a while. You've been on the LDI for quite a while. Let's, you know, taper you off of that the rest of the way, keep up the mold treatment for a bit longer, followed up again, you know, six, eight weeks later, somewhere in there. And she was doing a lot better. She's about, you know, 90% um, back to baseline and was very, very happy with that. Um, <clears throat> now in her case, She's stayed around the 90% back to baseline um, point. Um, you know, we tapered her off of the, um, but, you know, after another month or so, we taper her to I recommended that she taper off the uh, uh, frankincense nasal spray, taper off the binder, taper off the glutathione, taper off the multi. Um, I believe we wound up bringing in some mitochondrial support and that seemed to help a bit more. But um, like many of my patients, you know, once they're doing markedly better, we kind of see like, well, what were things like in your life leading up to this? And like, you know, I, I was pretty busy. I was kind of stressed. There was kind of this, you know, um, dysfunctional relationship that wound up ending actually shortly after she started getting um, a lot better. And that seemed to be a really positive thing. It was just from what she told me, it seemed like a very dysfunctional relationship with a significant uh, person in her life. Um, and so th there were some ongoing stressors, you know, kind of some work issues, you know, eventually started a new job, which she likes a lot better, which is great. Um, and, and those are some of the things that I think were probably 
holding her back from feeling you know 100 well um, because there were some pre-existing issues before you know, she started getting getting sick but uh, thankfully um, seemed to recover um, you know pretty efficiently you know it took maybe three months or so maybe three and a half months in total um, to get her to the point where she was doing quite a lot better so so quite a successful case um, in her case she opted to not retest her mycotoxins I don't blame her because uh, here in Canada we don't have any labs that measure mycotoxins we send samples off to the states um, the US dollar is quite a bit stronger than the Canadian dollar um, and so it's you know that much more expensive for folks to do mycotoxin testing so she's like I'm feeling good I don't really want to shell out another worked out to be about you know, $450 Canadian to do this test um, so you know, we just said you know what um, you're feeling a lot better you're not relapsing now that you've come off the protocol so let's just let sleeping dogs lie and uh, thankfully she's been off the protocol now for six months or something like that and she's doing or maybe seven months that whatever it is the, the, the time it flies um but uh, she's been off of it and is doing well so um it was in my opinion a successful case i mean maybe there is some residual mold in her system but she doesn't seem to be suffering unduly for it so um that that is the end of that story so um i hope that this um uh, case was of interest. If anybody has any questions about this or any comments, please feel free to post in the comment section below. Uh, if you have questions about other topics, feel free to post. I'll do a couple more of these um, sort of successful case videos and then I'll get back to just answering questions like I have been. And um, I will leave it there for now.